There is nothing like the start of maple season. Everything in nature starts to come alive. And over the course of the maple season, you get to see all of the snow disappear. So Brittany and I decided to take on a challenge this year. We wanted to see what it would take in order to make enough maple sugar to last us an entire year so that we would never have to get additional sugar from the store. So a few years back, when we were on a permaculture and indigenous knowledge exchange on Manitoulin Island, we learned from the local folks over there that the indigenous ancestors were typically not stopping the process of maple sugaring at just making maple syrup. In fact, they would make maple sugar. So there's actually a lot of additional benefits to creating sugar instead of syrup. Number one, it weighs an awful lot less. And if you've ever had to carry your own food, you know that every ounce counts. That's amazing, it rhymes. If you think about it, there's only so many ways that you can transport a liquid. You have to have very specialized containers, many mm -hmm. of which risk breaking. It's risky. Meanwhile, if you make sugar, you can literally toss that into a cloth sack and be on your way. With syrup, you have to can it properly. You have to make sure everything's sanitized. You mm. have to make sure everything seals properly. Whereas with sugar, you can just toss it into a jar on the shelf and leave it for the next 10 years. Um, and... So it has a longer shelf life. Yes. Got it. Cool. <laughs> What's next? So if we were wanting to see how much maple sugar we would need to produce in order to go a whole year without having to buy any sugar from the store, we're going to have to do a little math. Of course, it's very difficult for us to determine how much we might use in an average week because we've never actually measured or calculated that before. It depends on the week. Is it a birthday week? We decided to go for approximately one cup a week. That means 52 cups in a year, which translates into 13 liters of sugar. The big question question for us then is how many trees? Many of us know that there's the magic ratio of 40 to 1 sap to syrup. You cannot predict the weather and mm -hmm. the trees are really weather specific. And so our neighbor suggested that we do somewhere between 100 and 150 taps and we decided to split the difference uh, minus one and do 124 taps. It looks like our fire is down to coals. Lovely. Good time for us to start mixing our cake. Oh, the exciting part. This is actually Yuki's second year of doing maple season with us. And so Yuki was actually an incredible help this winter. Remember, do you remember Mush? Yuki pulled so many logs before the season started while there was still snow on the ground. Whoops, he still gets distracted. Fight, fight, drop it. Good, very good boy. It goes right. That's Yuki's stick. Good boy, Yuki. Here we go. <laughs> Did you love it? He seemed to feel pretty proud of himself. We were also gathering all of the sap the old, old fashioned way, meaning on two legs, with buckets going up and down the different terrain. <laughs> it was lovely, it was uneven, Exhausting it was hard and work, a lot of work. But you know you're working for your sugar. We did not have any rain guards above the bucket. Yes. Speaking of rain guards, there's an unexpected other benefit for them. Oh, the worms. Yeah. <laughs> very, very strange. As we're going around gathering the buckets, we noticed a random worm in the bottom of a bucket here, a random worm in the bottom of the bucket there. The question that we both had was, how the heck does a worm get up a tree? Where do the worms come from? And so because we did end up having leaves and insects and worms in the buckets, as we were pouring our sap into the storage containers, we made sure to have some kind of filter cloth there. And so for storage barrels, we used some old food grade containers that were transformed into rain barrels. Brittany put one higher up on the hill and then we would 
have a hose going down the hill and we could turn this on and off. Thank you, gravity, you rock. And so of course, after we collected a few days worth of sap, it was time to boil it off. We have our sap in this evaporator. We got our fire that's starting below. It has been raining, pressure is low. The fire is gonna be a little bit harder to get going, but we really gotta get this sap boiling because we don't want it to go bad. All right, so we got our fire going. As you can see, we're starting to get some steam on the top. This should be at a boil soon. I was expecting we we're gonna have a really hard time. One of those fire won't start kind of days. And so the purpose of the fire reflecting wall is to reflect the heat back underneath the evaporator. This serves a second function as well of helping to dry out these pieces of wood since it's been raining quite a bit. Now it looks like this is starting to boil, so I'm gonna take care of this. So what I'm doing here is I'm skimming the top of this foamy scum. It's a little technique from our neighbor. Just using a regular kitchen strainer here. I find it actually quite relaxing. <laughs> so Augie just came back with some firewood and uh, in the meantime I am going to start refilling our evaporator with sap. In just the last few hours the evaporator has boiled down about that much. We could of course do another fire tomorrow and another fire the next day but we like to save all of our sap up so it's just a lot more efficient if you can make use of the same fire and just keep it going which means we'll probably be here um, until after dark. Uh, instead of just continuing talking I'm gonna keep working. Well folks, we've lost daylight, uh, the fire is going really nicely, we've been really lucky. The sap has been boiling down very nicely. Let me show you here where we're at. It is almost down and ready to take off, so we'll be doing that shortly. After we boiled all of the sap down into syrup, it was time to make sugar. And so since we were feeling a little bit nervous about doing the whole sugaring process ourselves this time, we were able to watch our neighbor go through the process along with another local family. He's been doing this since the 70s and therefore just like a good cast iron pan, he is very well seasoned. <laughs> we used uh, what our neighbor John calls the sugaring paddle. And basically you keep stirring through the syrup as it's evaporating. The color, at first it is kind of a, a dark brown, very, very dark. As it starts boiling, it starts getting lighter and lighter. And eventually it turns into this kind of almost golden brown. You know that the pan is ready to take off the fire when as you are pushing the paddle through, it starts creating streaks and you can also see the bottom of the pan. You absolutely want to make sure that you continue working it while it's warm. Otherwise, these clumps right here will become rock solid. You'll end up with a really lovely consistency that's very, very, very similar to moist brown sugar. Physically, you feel it at the end of the day. It's also a very satisfying sensory experience. After going through it another time with our neighbor, we felt a little more confident to attempt this by ourselves. Okay, let's check it out. This is a pretty budget job. It's not as pretty as I was hoping, but hey, we're in the bush. Brittany, happy birthday. Mmm. <laughs> okay, so in the end of the day, how much sugar did we get? 20 liters of sugar. Which means that if Brit's calculations are correct, we should have enough sugar for the year and enough to trade and share the surplus. Augie, you know would be really good with this? Maple, Maple coffee. coffee. Check out this video on the left. And if you're interested in taking a look at Yuki's progress and learning to be a sled dog this winter, I would recommend checking this video on the right. If any of you folks happen to know what the heck is up with the worms in the bottom of the sap bucket, please do let us know.